I'm Charlie Coyle, and you're watching Power Play of CJ. Here with Charlie Coyle of the Minnesota Wild, back in his hometown of Weymouth, Mass. What's going on, Charlie? How much? How are you? Good, good. Got to start out with, um, had an event for the last couple of years hockey-wise. How's it feel to think, you know, you've got a pretty safe spot this year for the first time in a while, knowing you'll be probably on the same team all year. How's that feel? Oh, it's good. It's, uh, it was nice to finally get up there to uh, the NHL and actually play. It's, you know, it's something I've always worked towards, and, and uh, you know, every little kid's dream is to, uh, you know, play in the NHL one day, so it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to finally get to that stage and, and experience it all and be on a you know a good team with the Wild and a good organization. So pretty happy where I'm at right now. Now some say you're a notable mission from the U.S. Olympic camp. Are you going to use that as a motivating factor going into this year and try to show uh, Dave Poyle and company wrong? Or is that? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, that's always in the back of your mind. And, and obviously that would be a pretty pretty big accomplishment. And, you know, every time you can put on that, you know, the USA jersey is pretty special. And, you know, it's I, that's pretty proud to do that. And, but I mean, that's you know my main focus is to you know focus on training camp right now and and uh, obviously you know making the, the the team again right out of training camp and and uh, actually experience uh, you know experience in the training camp I haven't um, you know made it through you know that grind and and, and experience that also it'll be nice to you know go for a full season here and it'll be my first one so I'm really focusing on that to start and we'll see what happens. Now let's get some youngsters on the team. You and uh, Jason Zucker, you guys lived together a little bit last year. You guys back together or what? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what that situation is going to be. Like I said, it's going to, you know, whatever happens in training camp and uh, see what happens there. But, I mean, uh, he's, he's an awesome guy and uh, a great player, obviously, everyone knows. And I got to room with him last year on the road, and uh, we were in the apartment together last year. And, and uh, he's a great guy to live with, and uh, he's a good buddy of mine. Now the Wilds had a pretty good year last year, falling to the eventual Cup champs in the first round. What are your goals individually and as a team this year going into it? Your first full season. Yeah, no, definitely as a team. I think uh, you know we made some strides as a team. We just uh, you know obviously fell a little short. You you, know, you want to make the playoffs and you want to go far and and win a cup. Obviously, we didn't accomplish that, but we did uh, make some strides, like I said. So obviously, uh, you know I think we're gonna have a pretty good team coming back and uh, you know with the guys we've uh, you know acquired and and uh, you know like I said the guys who are uh, you know coming back with us. So I mean it, it should be good. Um, you know, personally, I just want, you know, I spent this summer, you know, working hard in the gym, on the ice, um, you know, working on little things that I, you know, I thought I needed to work on, and, um, you know, just being a, uh, you know, player that they can count on and contribute in all areas. Now, you mentioned some of the guys. Uh, what veterans on the team, if any, were your biggest motivators, um, you know, mentors going into the last season and throughout your stretch with the Wild? We had a, we had a lot of guys who, uh, you know, really helped the younger guys. Uh, we had a few younger guys that, uh, you know, first year in, in the league, and um, we we're lucky enough to be with a few guys, you know, like uh, you know Zach Priest and maybe Corver were guys on my line who I play with most of the time, and um, they were always very helpful with me and, and make me feel comfortable and, and teach me every day. And I know, you know, Matt Cullen was a very experienced guy who uh, you know helped us as well, and um, you know, just not great guys to be around. Obviously, good players on the ice, and uh, but even better guys off. So we were lucky enough to have a pretty good uh, you know core of guys who helped us. Speaking of Matt Collins, his presence going to be missed next year, taking his talents to the Music City. You'll, you'll, he'll be missing that lineup, right? Yeah, no, that's one guy who uh, you know I, I wanted back, and I know other guys did too. So, um, I mean, that that's the business of it, and uh, you know it, you know it is what it is. But uh, you know he definitely was a great guy, and he was a good player for us. But I mean, uh, you know we have some other good players coming in, so it should be good. Now, final question. Day after St. Patrick's Day, you guys are in Boston. Is that date circled on the calendar yet or what? <laughs> I know a lot of people have been talking to me about it and, and uh, pretty excited. But, I mean, obviously that's going to be pretty special to, to, you know, come to Boston and play on that day and, and uh, you know, have the family there. But, I mean, I kind of got to put that in the back of the mind and focus on, you know, the task at hand and, uh, you know, like I said, training camp and just getting started. So we'll see when time comes. Right, thanks, Charlie. Thank you. My name is Morgan Klimchuk, and you are watching the Power Play of CJ. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Morgan Klimchuk, I play for the Regina Pats in the Western Hockey League. So uh, your team struggled this year. What part, um, not only getting drafted, but how do you want to prove your team next year through your own play? Well, you know, I'd like to be a leader next year. That's to me the biggest part. I, I wore an A for a little bit this year and was, was looked to in a pretty big role, whether that's penalty kill or power play. So I just want to step that up, make sure I'm contributing on both sides of the puck and being a reliable, reliable honest player. So whether that's, you know, putting the puck in the net or, or keeping them out, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm a go-to guy every night. And uh, one of the best Regina players, Regina alum in the NHL is Jordan Eberle. You've worked out with him in the past. What, if anything, is he given, advice has he given you for the draft process and your play on the ice? Uh, he said, you know, just take it all in and enjoy it because it only happens once. He said, you know, at the end of the day, you got to just play hockey and make sure you're, you're playing your best and, and then just being, being an honest person. You know, he said, don't, don't try to impress people or do anything like that. Just 
to play the game and be yourself in the interviews, and then things go pretty well. And what, if, just keeping with the Everly theme, is there one player in particular you base your game off? You amalgamate your game? Is there anyone? Larry Jordan. You know, oh. I, that's my NHL comparable player. When I talk to teams and when teams ask me, I think you know we both play our strong side wing. We're both similar stature, and you know we both we both skate in, in the same way. I'd say, and, and we create using our, our our vision and our hockey sense, and not just running the guy over or blowing by someone. And uh, everyone in the draft this year for the for the Western League guys, which one stands out the most as being one of the more uh, the toughest guy to compete against in this draft class? In this draft class, uh, obviously Seth Jones, unbelievable competitor and unbelievable defenseman. So he would be my number one. But you know that's pretty pretty cliche answer. So as for defenseman, you know, I'd say Dylan Hetherington, actually my roommate here, is very hard to compete against. He's very explosive and he's in your face all the time. So he's a tough player to play against. And uh, what teams in particular have you spoken to the most? I can edit this out. Ah, uh, Calgary. Calgary. Calgary, probably the most. They got two picks, and you're you're, yeah. not, you're an Alberta kid, right? Three, they yeah. got three picks oh, in yeah. the first round. So Calgary, Columbus, uh, Anaheim, a couple times. Oh, so. perfect. So, yeah. anything else you want to say to any GM that might be watching? I don't think they will be, but no, just uh, looking forward to the process for sure. Oh, that's perfect, man. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ Prospect Profiles. I'm going to focus in on Noah Hannafin, uh, one of the top players eligible for the 2015 NHL entry draft, which should be the revival of Massachusetts hockey in terms of first round picks. Obviously, him and Jack Eichel projected to go in the top five, you know, and anything could change in the next 23 months. But, and actually, I think that draft is going to be in Sunrise, Florida, down where the pay of this play. I think, I think, I think. So we'll see if I'm right on that. Um, you know, he's playing for the U.S. development team next year. This past year, the St. Seb's um, Massachusetts prep schedule had 34 points in 27 games as a sophomore, and uh, six foot three and 190 pounds. I think he could fill out to be six foot five, 225. I mean, he's really got you know the size, the skating ability, the offensive prowess, and uh, you know just a great head for the game. I remember hearing about him. You know, it's rare for. Uh, an eighth grader to crack the lineup in St. Sebastian is very, very, very rare. It's rare for a freshman to do it too. And he did it as an eighth grader, um, you know, two, three years ago. And I remember talking to my dad, who's actually his, his mailman, go figure. And, um, you know, my dad told me how good he was and everything. It's like, you know, okay. And then he's actually, I'm good friends with his cousin who was telling me, you know, the, the same sentiments. And got the chance to see him play, I forget it was this year or last year. And I was like, damn, they were right, you know. And I, I did the piece this past year, uh, this past December, about is Seth Jones the next great, great. In all quotes, not just great, but great uh, American defenseman. And his cousin texted me and said, you know, it's, it's going to be my, it's going to be uh, Noah in a couple of years. And said, you know, Timmy, we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I think that, that could be the case. And you'll get the common denominator among great teams perennially is having great defensemen. You know, you look at this past year. You know, Chicago having Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook. You look at the Bruins having Daniel Chara, the Kings with Drew Doughty. Um, you know, obviously Detroit all those years with Nick Lidstrom. Uh, Anaheim, you know, wrote the book with Pronger and uh, Scott Niedermeyer. I mean, even Edmonton with Chris Pronger going to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, having, you know, that future Hall of Fame defense when that combined skill, speed, uh, skating ability, tenacity, and offensive prowess. And, you know, you, you get you that healthy mix, and um, anything could happen. I think that's, you know, what, what why Hannafin's so highly touted is because he's got all of those things. And uh, if I hit the lottery, I'd, I'd want to see him and Connor McDavid, the projected number one pick. 2015, play one on one for about two hours. I think that'd be an amazing thing, and you know, just a great waste of money, personally. You know, God, God knows when you got money, you got to spend it. But um, you know, I'm really excited to see what he can do, and I think he's there's going to be an interesting little battle going on here between BC and the Quebec Rampots, who drafted him in the second round of the Q draft. The I think he was the second American taken uh, behind Southie's own Cam Askew, who we'll talk about ad nauseum as time goes on. Um, but, you know, I, my dad told me from talking to parents and people around him that his family is dead set against playing major juniors because, you know, the the value of a college education. And obviously, Boston College is an amazing um, school and, you know, really one of the top academic schools in the country. And their hockey program, you know, does okay perennially. Just a few national championships the last couple of years. But, um, you know, you look at how good the Quebec Rampots have been at convincing American kids to go up there. Adam Ernay decommitted from... Uh, BU to go up there, uh, Ryan Bork decommitted from UNH to go up there, and, you know, those guys, those are just a few of them, and, um, you know, I think it's a little bit different not having Patrick Roy there, up there now, you know, obviously he's coaching Colorado, Philippe Boucher, he was a pretty good NHL player, he, he's in, you know, I'm curious to see what he does as a GM um, of the of the Ramparts, but, you know, that should be an interesting dynamic, he was a pretty good defenseman for a long time, played a lot of years, won a Stanley Cup with Pittsburgh, um, but, you know, that's going to be something to keep an eye on, you know, I think he was going to be 
I heard, well, I read, I didn't hear it. Um, he was the best defenseman they've ever seen in a national team development program tryouts. And this is a program that's produced, you know, Jack Johnson, Ryan Whitney, guys like that. And, uh, you know, for that praise we heaped on him, it's like, okay. You know, now in fairness, Brian Leach and those guys didn't have the development team that went right from prep school to, to BC, the NHL, in Leach's case. And, um, you know, it's like with the development team been around 15 years. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. But I, uh, I'm i excited. You know, I'm curious to see what he does next year. There's a major jump up in competition from, you know, the New England prep schedule to, the you know, the USHL, the international schedules, all that. But I think he's going to be up for the challenge. And I think he'll be um, a guy you're going to hear from a lot in the next two years. And dare I say he could be challenging McDavid for number one. I think it's a stretch. I'm a huge Connor McDavid fan, but um, you know this this could be he could be the one to challenge them. So we'll, I'm just curious to see what happens. But he's gonna be one hell of a player, and you'll be hearing, like I said, hearing from a lot in the next couple of years. Anyway, that's my next episode of the Power Play with CJ Prospect Profiles on Noah Hannafin. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the off season and beyond. Later, guys. Everyone, welcome to Power Play with CJ. Uh, as many of you know, last week I issued or um, offered an olive branch to Melanie Collins to end our feud. And she took it pretty well, but I wasn't totally getting on board with the Rock and a Power Play with CJ T-shirt. And as many of you know, I made a joke in there uh, in that piece about you know maybe having a boxing match with Scotty Upshaw at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. So I figured to um, you know throw some more wood on the fire, so to speak. I don't know what the something about putting stuff on a fire. Um, I'm going to do David Letterman top 10 style of why uh, Scotty Upshaw and I should do that uh, about in, in Las Vegas. I worked really, really hard on this. Actually, I did about five minutes because I'm wicked smart. But uh, without further ado, number 10, Penn State's bowling eligible next year. Something has to count competitively in the Collins Upshaw household. That was a lame joke. Penn State was an easy victim. Number 9, this year Jason Zucker of Las Vegas, Nevada became a NHL regular. What better way to honor the state of Nevada breaking out with the game of hockey, then to have a boxing match between the great, one of the greatest hockey analysts um, ever and uh, a pretty good player for the Ford Panthers. Number eight, Pacquiao and Mayweather aren't going to help stimulate the Vegas economy. You know, we got to take it on ourselves, oh, Scotty. I mean, look at it this way, right? So ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. One of my fellow assholes said that. I think he was president or something, too. I know, I know he went out with Marilyn Monroe, or cheated on his wife with Marilyn Monroe. Once upon a time. Number seven, I've always wanted to be in a Maroon 5 video. The one more night video, come on, really? I don't have a goldfish or, you know, a girlfriend or, like, a lot of tattoos, but, you know, it's still be pretty cool. Number six, does the Mirage have Florida Panthers? Question mark. Number five, it's 287 miles from Phoenix to Vegas. Can you imagine Biz Nasty, your former teammate, Paul Bissonnette? Uh, hitchhiking and live tweeting simultaneously. That would be some pretty entertaining stuff. And if they had an Emmy, an Oscar, or a Grammy for live tweeting, uh, hitchhiking with a bunch of hippies, that would win it. Anything involving Fizz usually goes out that goes that way. Number four, give the LA Kings Twitter account a chance to make a joke about assault and battery. Kings made a uh, very offhand, um, very bad joke. I will see that. Number three, I'm going to need a screaming old man in my corner, and John Tortorella will be unemployed by then. My broom was up big time. Number two, last time I was in Vegas, I jumped in a pool with all my clothes on, ate bugs, and had a hissy fit at Treasure Island when I found out the pirates were not real pirates. I was also six years old, and it was in 1998. Time flies, kiddos. And the number one reason, two words, amnesty clause. Ba-boom. Those fighting words. Anyway, Scotty, challenge on the table. Get it down. You know, you get your money team going. Um, you know, as long as Justin Bieber isn't on my money team, I'm cool. You know, I probably want, like, John Mayer, Steven Tyler, um, George, uh, Ben Affleck, you know, get, get my fellow mass Affleck and David, not Wal. you can have Wahlberg. It's, it's, I want, like, the hardcore Boston actors, I think it'd be awesome. But anyway, that was my half ass humorous fe uh, piece for a while, going real big with the NHL playoffs and the draft coming up, so got to do pieces like this to, uh, to lighten the mood. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Melanie, Scotty, what's going on? You guys rock and power play with CJ? I mean, come on. Working too hot at this stuff. That's all I got. Later, guys.
Last year. Sorry. Last, last year. year. Sorry. What uh, what brings you to the draft this year, Pat? Um, I'm coming down with Kirby from the Eagles family. Um, just here to support him and just give him some advice. Uh, you know, he's a very good player and he's got a good future. And he's looking forward to this weekend. Now, you guys got kind of a disappointing finish in winter. What what are you going to do next year to help the team have more success on the ice? Yeah, next year will be uh, interesting. We're a lot older. we got an older bunch of guys. And... Uh, was a transition going from the U.S. development team to the OHL. Was there a learning curve there you had to worry about? Or? Um, a little bit. You know, I played college games when I was with the U.S. team, so I had a little experience with that. But, you know, the guys, they like fighting. There's fighting's in the game. You sign college. So that was a different part of it. So you had to adjust with that a little bit. And as a physical defenseman, you obviously had to fight a little bit more. Was that something that took you back at first, or were you, did you know that going into? Um, early in the season, I kind of had to do it a little bit more than expected. But the way I play, uh, I know it's going to come. But throughout the year, I kind of dwindled. So I don't, I don't have an argument. I don't have a problem with it, though. And yeah, final question, as a Bruins fan, is Coco the real deal? Coco's a good player. He's uh, very skilled. And um, one day, he'll be in the NHL. He might be a good pass. Go easy on him. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Pat. No problem. Anthony Florentino, Providence College bound defenseman, projected fourth, fifth round pick from West Roxbury, Massachusetts. How's it going, Flo? There's one play you can pay your game to. Who would it be? Johnson being an American have anything to do with you uh, taking after his style? This is a pretty good American behind you. Um, no. Um, I didn't really know a lot about him until I found out he played for the national team uh, in Ann Arbor. That's when I found out he's American. But uh, he was my favorite player before that. So, yeah. What drew you to uh, Providence College? Um, South Camp, a real small school, 180 kids. Um, Providence was the smallest school that I had an offer from. Home and then, uh, Coach Lee, Coach Barr, Coach Russell are all great guys. You, what teams in particular have you spoken to the most the last couple weeks? I know it's been a, a kind of a circus the last few days for you guys. Um, you know, the top two teams would be Boston, Chicago. Um, but kind of, kind of an irony right there yeah, for you. It's, it's kind of awkward talking to them just because they're Stanley Cup and all, but uh, Boston, Chicago would be the top two. Any other teams in on you at all? Or just, uh, yeah, there's. Um, a few other ones, but uh, not that I talked to directly that my advisors spoke to. So. And out of the players in this draft class you played against and with, you know, you played with a few of them too, uh, who's the best one that, that stands out to you the most? Um, you know, they're all great players and all, but, uh, you know, JT Conflict kind of you know, put it into perspective for me. Uh, I didn't play with a lot of them, but JT Conflict would be my uh, top one. Now, once upon a time, you played with me in a summer league. Am I the worst hockey player of all time? Be honest. This is for the fans. Uh, no, you're not. Thanks, Flo. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. I want to focus in on Massachusetts native and one of the top prospects for 2015 for the 2015 entry draft, uh, Jack Eichel possibly spreading his commitment up to Boston University to play in the Ontario Hockey League because he wants to go head-to-head -head with Connor McDavid. The odds of this happening are slim to none because St. John hold, the St. John Sea Dogs hold his rights in the in the queue and uh, in order for him to get to the OHL, it would have to be waived and go unclaimed by every single team in the queue. Not exactly likely considering, you know, he's a top two, three round, ten, top two, three overall pick in that draft, obviously, McDavid. That goal he scored against the Plymouth Whalers was... Uh, Pretty nice, you know, speaking of McDavid, but he wants to go head-to-head -head and see how it would match up, and I, I respect him for that. This is where Canadian juniors lose me. That and the AHL rule, neither one I'll ever understand, but as an American kid, I wouldn't... This is going to sound bad. I wouldn't want to play in, like, Quebec or you know, any place where I'd have to learn French because I, I, like I can't learn languages. I have a high IQ. I can't learn languages, so it's a humble brag. 
I mean, I could play for Halifax, Charlottetown, um, you know, St. John, one of those teams in the Maritimes, absolutely. But playing for, you know, Quebec or Drummondville, I just, it would be a thing, a difficult time for me. I'd rather play for London, obviously, everyone wants to play for London, one of the best teams in juniors perennially. But I mean, you know, even, you know, the Austrian Generals team like that, I'd love to play out west, you know, play for the, the T Birds or the Giants, uh, Paul and Hawks, Tri City's my, my dub team. That'd be amazing to play up there, Washington State. So maybe this allows. I, the weird thing was, Jeremy Roenick, a Massachusetts kid like Eichel, was drafted both by the Hull, now Gatineau Olympique. He, when he was drafted, it was Hull. And uh, the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds of the OHL. And Brian Noonan from my town, South Boston, um, played for the, I believe, Brandon Weekings of Portland Winterhawks, looking up right now, in the Western League. And again, Massachusetts kid. So, I, you know, I don't know. Obviously, it goes by region. The Q has New England. Uh, the OHL has New York and New Jersey, and the Dub has you know California, Minnesota, uh, Arizona. It, it, the irony now is I think the, the Dub's getting the best American talent between Minnesota and, uh, and California. I mean, California's definitely on the rise in the last couple of years in terms of producing high-quality hockey prospects. And actually, and the, the O has Michigan, too, so <laughs> they really can't complain. But I... Um, I'd like to see it happen. Obviously, as a BU fan, and I'm going to be back in Boston full time next year. It would be, um, you know, great to have him at BU to watch him play. But I always kind of like the major junior aspect of it because I think it's a more capitalistic system where the kids, you know, make a couple bucks, and it's not the, you know, the uh, I'm trying to think the hypocrisy one. Not that juniors isn't lined with hypocrisy. But, you know, let's let's be honest with uh, how bad the NCAA is. But, you know, whatever way the kid goes, he's going to be a top pick. I don't see him knocking off McDavid. I, I think, you know, he's going to have a great year next year at BU or, you know, wherever he plays. But he's not going to knock off McDavid. I think it's a um, it's a long shot he ends up at uh, in the OHL. But it's intriguing. Brian Noonan played for the new Westminster Bruins, which I think became the Chilliwack Bruins, which are now the Victoria Royals. I believe that's how it went, but I got his stats right here. He went right from Archbishop Williams High School to the new Westminster Bruins, the dub. A couple notable names Brian Noonan played with. Uh, Cliff Ronning, former National Predator great. Craig Berube, current head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers. And that's really all that matters. Just heads up. Oh, Bill Ranford, the goalie. Anyway, that's next episode of the Power Play with CJ on Jack Eichel possibly taking his talents to the Ontario Hockey League. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the season and beyond. Later, guys. Here with Bruins prospect Brian Furlan, Cornell uh, winger here. How was your uh, week at rookie camp? It was good. It was, it was tough. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff in a short period of time. You know, a lot of skating, a lot of Ice training, a lot of new meetings with no nutrition, and uh, you know, they had us cooking ourselves and all that kind of stuff. So, we had a lot of stuff packed in one week, it was fun. So, it's your third time with the Bruins rookie camp, yep. so you're one of the elder statesmen. What yeah. advice do you have for the younger guys out there? Uh, you over know, this just, week? just enjoy it. You know, everyone's, uh, everyone's a little nervous when they first get here, so you know, you gotta kind of get the jitters out first day, but you know, just enjoy it and take, take as much as you can, be a sponge. For the uh, co your college game, uh, what goals do you have individually and as a team going into the season for the uh, Cornell Big Red? Uh, well, you know, obviously, personally, I just want to you know keep getting better and uh, obviously uh, improve, improve uh, on and off the score sheet, just keep getting bigger, stronger, faster, and hopefully that translates over to you know goals and help my team out. And so hopefully we can uh, have a big year, start out strong, and uh, make a run. Now you're a Florida kid. What's it like to come up from a non-traditional market, playing for the Jacksonville Sharks, go to the USHL, end up at Cornell, be drafted by Original Six team? Will uh, yeah, it's a bit of a world change the scenery? Yeah, exactly. So it's a great town, great city. We got to see a bunch of it. Um, a few times I've been up here, so I love it up here. It's uh, yeah, beautiful Florida. It's it's not what you would yeah, and, uh, really think would happen. So what do you have to say about hockey in Florida? Is it definitely on the rise? Will it be? Is it getting? to the point where it's no longer laughable? Yeah, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, definitely getting there. I, mean, I think it was one of the one of the biggest growing rate, uh, rates of hockey in the country in terms of state by state. So it was uh, you know, a big opportunity for, uh, for growth down there. A lot of people, a lot of, uh, a lot of new rinks and stuff being built. So you know, I think it's definitely taken off. Some other prospects from Florida were there, Carpenter today, and yeah. um, then other and other organizations, Ghost Beer and yeah. Bradyville, guys like that. You played with them at all growing up, or? I played with Carpenter uh, oh. growing up. He was on Orlando. I played for Orlando for a few years, so we've been buddies since we were like 
10, 12 years old, so it was good to see him out there. There's one, if there was one level of your development where you really thought you could have gone to the next level, you were going to the next level, what would it have been and what's you know been the most important stop in your hockey odyssey? Uh, well, I think making the USHL was, was a huge step for me, just coming from Florida, going, going straight there, that was a... Uh, Obviously, a huge leap. So I think you know Jeff Blashill as a coach there that year gave me a big opportunity to you know kind of take advantage of and help me out along the way. And a lot of other people helped me out too. But I think that you know just having the opportunity to uh, really play for the play in the USHL as a when I was 17 and 18 really uh, kind of gave me a boost and you know, kind of jump started my career a little bit. So the last question: What do you have to say to Boston fans about how you play the game comparable to? Uh, Bruins have passed, you know, with the, the gradientness and the tenacity. Is that you bring to the uh, table? Yeah, or? yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a physical player. Uh, try to play big and, you know, protect the puck and try to play tough and, uh, you know, try to make some few goals and assist now and then to be a little bit of a playmaker as well. So definitely, uh, you know, try to play try to play gritty, but try to play with some skill as well. All right, perfect. Thanks for, thanks for coming along. Yeah, no What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. I want to focus in on uh, Kevin Miller of the Boston Bruins really breaking out as of late, and I thought at times he was their best defenseman in the shootout, or the best player, and the shootout loss to uh, the Montreal Canadiens uh, the other night, you know, that ended their 12-game winning streak. You're looking at what he does. He's not going to win any Norris trophies. He's not going to be some fancy puck mover that, uh, you know, quarterbacks your power play and makes everyone around him better. He is a rock-solid, physically impo imposing defenseman, defensive defenseman that you need back there. And uh, his skating ability, I think, is underrated. And I think you're looking at the way he pressed the attack on the penalty kill in that game. Um, you know, I... I a lot of people were low on him. A lot of people, some people were, I think, too high on him. But I was kind of, like, I kind of had a mixed bag on him. But I like him. He is a legitimate National Hockey League defenseman. Again, is he a one or two? No, he's a depth defenseman that has earned this shot. He's 26 years old, Los Angeles, California native, and um, you know I think the best days are ahead for him. I did, I'm glad the Bruins signed him to a two-year extension. I think, and I hate to say this because I love Darth Quader, but. I think Adam McQuaid's on his way out. Uh, he's obviously hurt now, but I think they'll flip him. Um, you know, the season's over. Obviously, they won't get much back for him because of the injury. And, I, again, I love Quater. But um, I think getting, having Miller in the mix definitely changes, um, you know, a lot of things for the Bruins and makes the, the dynamic, uh, you know, lower cap it with, you know, versus McQuaid's cap it and all that. But, um, you know, he, he's great. I mean, he's, he's great at what he does. And I think it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and I'm, I've really come around to him. I, I, you know, I like having physicality back there. It's an intimidation factor. He can fight. He's plus 17 on the year. He doesn't put you at a disadvantage. I know, he, you know, kind of took a stupid penalty, you know, the other night. But you know, the fight he had was awesome. And you know, depending upon what, you, what your opinion of fighting hockey is, you know, having a guy that can throw down and stand up for his teammates. Um, and uh, you know, I think this maybe could because his skating ability isn't that bad. I think is actually pretty good. Um, I think there's probably a little more offense in there than he, he's getting credit for, and I think he's got you know some good hockey sense that um, you know exceed his, his raw physical talent, which you know he's a depth defenseman and he understands his role. And uh, I think the the Bruins really got a diamond in the rough, no pun intended, with this guy. And I'm glad they uh, they have him locked up long term. I love his game, and I think you'll be seeing uh, Kevin Miller here in Boston for a while. He's he's going to be a fan favorite, you know. And I hate to see that's probably forced McQuaid out, but um, it's just the nature of the beast in the NHL. It's next man up, and he he got an opportunity because the Bruins' blue line was beleaguered, was um, you know, completely decimated by injuries, and he's lived up, he's been great, and he's taken advantage of his opportunity. And um, you know that's all you need. You know they you look at um, how many times in Boston sports, obviously in different situations, much more you know impactful. Uh, you know you look at Tom Brady got his shot because of you know the injury to Bledsoe, and uh, you know it's it's kind of funny. You know and I'm not comparing them in any way, shape, or form, but it's just the way it happened. You know you don't wish for anyone to get hurt, but it's nature of the beast in professional sports. You know there are going to be injuries, and when you get your chance to play. If it's because of injuries, it's because someone else has been ineffective. You have to make the most of it. And Kevin Miller has done that this season, and he has earned himself a spot on the Boston Bruins, a nice contract, and uh, a good a good place in the highs of fans all over New England. Anyway, that's all from this episode of the Power Play with CJ. Stay tuned for episodes throughout the season and beyond. Later, guys. Ryan Miller getting moved today, guys. Hopefully. No way I say hope so. No way I say that. He needs to go west.
Neil, I love it. James Neal, the real deal. Neil, yes ma'am. Um, you know I would pick the little the 77 and then the 89, so I'm just here to scream for us basically. <laughs> Was he again Ladeal worth the first round pick? Yeah, Jerome is winning for Iggy, even though we didn't win it this year, we got next year in the back. The team he turned down uh, beat him. How, how do you, what do you think of that? Okay, it's the same idea as like Mary and Mosa a couple years ago. He I like that, I like that idea. So we'll get it back. Thanks ladies. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> now was that goal the best goal ever or what? The that Memorial Cup? Amazing. Yeah, totally. Came up a little short, but it is what it is. Did it show up? Yeah, it came up. I got you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm here at the Earth as well as my cousin and I am a Montreal Canadian fan. I love for him to go to Montreal, but unfortunately I am hoping that he goes first uh, first ten. What about uh what player at the end of the first round do you see being a fit with the Habs? <laughs> <laughs> How about Curtis Lazar, Edmonton Oil King, center? So let's get a go Habs go. I can't, I can block my Go Habs go. Jason Salvaggio right before the start of the 2013 NHL entry draft in Newark, New Jersey. Jason, tell the fans a little bit about you, your playing background, how you play. I um, identify myself as a goal scorer and a two-way player. Um, try to play like uh, James Neal, the Pittsburgh Penguins, so from uh, Hanson, Massachusetts. I played for South Kent in uh, 17 games with the Indiana Ice. You're going to Indiana full-time next year. What are you going to expect to play? What do you expect the level of competition to be? To jump um, I'm pretty happy I got a little jump start to test the waters when I was out there. Um, so I know what it's like and I know what I need to be ready for uh, next season. Bound for uh, UNH. Dick Humilly is kind of a yeller. Are you ready for that in 2014? Yeah, I'm yeah. ready for that. I like uh, coaches always on my back. Um, when I make a mistake, I want to hear about it. There's one coach throughout your hockey career that really jump-started you, who would it be? Uh, coach Matt Plan of the U18 South Kent team this year. Uh, it really pushed me to be the best player I am. Now you and Florentino were teammates this year, obviously. Any little friendly wages on who goes first? Or? Uh, my money's on Florentino. Uh, you guys talk about, you were recruited by Providence, right? After yeah. You, um, and you talk about you two playing together. You're going to a great program, obviously, but. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty upset I'm not going to school with him, but um, we'll have some battles in the corner, which is good, too. And uh, we've always been close since freshman year, so it's going to be a fun day for both of us, hopefully. And uh, anything else you want to say to the fans? Anything to, if the GM was watching, which they're not, what, why should they take you? Um, I'll give it everything I got to make it to where I want to be, so it'll be a smart decision. That's all we got. Thanks, Jason.